Martin County Sheriff William Snyder is not running for re-election. He's talking about this decision. Let's listen to his announcement. Thank you so much uh, for the last 12 years. You have been uh, stalwart partners with us here at the Sheriff's Office as we've, as we've done the best we can to get our message out to the public, whether it's in the form of uh, PSAs or warnings or just trying to alert the public. You all have been such faithful uh, partners and also I think you've treated us fairly. Sometimes uh, we've been the source and sometimes we've been the story. But nonetheless, uh, thank you and I mean that. And then if I could just take a second. I think I have probably the best public information officer anywhere in the United States. And Christine, I know she hates me for doing this. Thank you, Christine. Be uh, your your hard work in helping us be uh, helping us be the face of public safety in Martin County has meant the world to me personally. Twelve years ago, when I got uh, when I got elected to this office, almost twelve years, I knew then that there would come a day when I would have to lay it down. So through the years after that, up until this current term, when I won this term, actually unopposed, I did some soul searching. So almost four years ago, and I did the math. And I knew that if I stayed two terms from then, I would have been 76 years old. And I started thinking, I didn't think I wanted to be sheriff that at that age. I, I'm an active sheriff. I, I, I'm not a desk sheriff. I, I couldn't sit behind a desk and, and be a sheriff. I'm, I'm on the road. I'm, I do search warrants with my troops. I stop cars. So I, 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 couldn't, uh, I couldn't see myself just being an administrator. So I began thinking from then at that point that perhaps I should begin working on a succession plan. I didn't know then if it would be four years or eight years. I didn't. But I did know that that time was coming and that I should, I should lay out a succession plan. And so I started mentoring people, young people, very young staff here. And, uh, and then finally in the last few months, I made the decision. I knew the time was right. I knew that this sheriff's office would be better served by a younger generation of leaders. I knew it. I don't want to leave. I, I'm, I'm unequivocal in that. I love what I do. I, I don't want to leave. I feel physically and mentally that I can continue doing it. But I'm, I'm thoughtful about the next four years. And as corny as it might sound, from the bottom of my heart, this is about the sheriff's office. It's not about me. If it's about me, I wouldn't leave. I love doing this. But we'll be better off here if I step away now and let uh, somebody else fill that gap. And before I turn it over for questions, I do really believe that that gap can best be filled by my second in command, my chief deputy, John Budenseek. I have 100% confidence in him. He's a man of integrity, a character. He's a family man, untouched by any scandals, never had, never even had an accusation of misdoings, mis misdeeds. So I'm, I'm unequivocal in that support and I'm publicly endorsing him now. As a matter of fact, as we speak, he is at the clerk's office or the supervisor of elections office filing his paperwork to run for uh, the office of sheriff of Martin County. And so with that, if you have any questions, I'm delighted to try to answer them. Steve King, WPBS 25 News. Um, sheriff, why not just one more term? Why not just uh, go at it a little longer? Yeah, Steve, good question. Why not one more term? I think the answer is what I've kind of predicated this statement by, and that is this is the best time for the sheriff's office for me to go. You know, I don't want to impose on God's will and God's grace. I've been well. I've, I'm physically able to do this job now, mentally able. But we see on a national level, there's some real questions about people in their 70s in power and in positions of leadership. I would argue that being a sheriff is a lot more rigorous in some ways, not near the responsibility, I get it, but it's a lot more rigorous in some ways than being a policymaker. I think I could leave here and be a policymaker with no problem, but do I want to be a sheriff with a badge and a gun and on the streets and leading 
25 year olds into battle. I think the time for my uh, my stepping away is absolutely now. Yeah, good question. Why do I support John Budensik? I've had the privilege of knowing John Budensik since he was 13 years old. I knew him as a little boy. I remember giving him a pocket knife at church. And when he was 19, he came to work at the sheriff's office. And I don't remember it, but he said that I was instrumental in helping him get hired at such a young age. He couldn't even buy bullets. He was so young. And I've watched him through the years, and he's a man of in tremendous integrity. <clears throat> Excuse me, he's a strong leader. I've seen him as a SWAT commander, as a narcotics commander. Uh, he's been all through the sheriff's office. And people, he galvanizes people. They just naturally follow him. You know, there are people, when they tell you, hit that door, you hit the door. You don't ask questions because you trust that person's judgment. And I trust them. And, and, and really, not to sound too theoretical, I want somebody to protect my grandchildren, Charlotte and, and uh, Reagan and William and the rest. John Budensick will do that, and that's why I support him. So, Sheriff, just to be clear, you, you in your Facebook <coughs> post, you were quoting Lou Gehrig that you were the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Now, yeah. you remember, Lou Gehrig left because he had yeah, health yes. ailments. So I just wanted to be clear. You said you're healthy. There's there's no health issues that are forcing you to Right. Die. Yeah, Lou Gehrig left. Of course, he had, I can't pronounce the, the, uh, the disease, but it became known as Lou Gehrig's disease. In my original uh, post, I actually put it, because of his transition, because I, I was, I, I could have been afraid that people would think that. No, I am extremely well. And by God's grace, four years from now, I'm going to go, see, I told you, I'm not sick. No, I'm not. I, I, yeah, no. There's, there's, I have nothing. I don't even have a cold. Sheriff, what are some of the hurdles that you will be facing, I mean, that you're still facing, that you'd like to get, uh, I guess, get, a more, get more of a handle on, from border to... Um, fit and all to some of the things you've been working on. Yeah, Greg, that's a great question. What what do I still have to do before I leave? And I want to say this, I will not be an absentee sheriff. At 5 o'clock on my last day, I plan to be at my desk or out stopping a car being sheriff. There's not going to be any lame duck looking at the clock waiting to go. But I think before I leave, I still want to be very careful about the mental health facility. I am trying with all my might to move the county commission, the state legislature, the supporters here in Martin County in the direction of getting us a, a, a separate mental health facility at the Martin County Correctional Facility. I, I think that's so important. I'm very alarmed by the amount of undocumented immigrants we have in our community, most of which, most of which are not a problem to us. I want to be unequivocal. Most of the people here from other countries, whether they're here legally or not, are not a problem for law enforcement. But there are a sizable amount of them that drive without driver's licenses, drive without insurance, leave the scene of accidents. Uh, we've done some background. I think I have 10 or 11 now in jail on serious felony charges, most of which are sex crimes. So we have to, as a sheriff's office, keep our eye on that ball and make sure the community knows and that our, our other leaders know that we're working hard to try to keep them safe. And uh, we continue working very hard with, with technology. We, we cannot confront the modern criminal today without advanced technology. And we don't talk about sources and means, but we have a robust technological platform which we are just in the middle of enhancing. I hope by the end of my term it will be just where we need to be and I'll be able to hand this off to somebody who who can just pick up the, the reins and, and ride it. And Sheriff, in your uh, Facebook post, you said you wanted to still find meaningful ways to help Martin County. You were a state representative before becoming sheriff. What are your plans for after um, you're finished being sheriff? Yeah, good question. What are my plans? I, I would like a rest for a few days, take a vacation of about a week, and then get back in the saddle. Uh, I, I don't have any immediate plans. I, I just know this. I was 19 years old when I went to work in public service. I've been in that system now, I'm going on 52 years. I can't imagine getting up in the day, getting up in the morning, not having a purpose to go out and try to help somebody. You know, when I was a kid, it's a funny story, but it's true, the only comic I read was Superman. Because Superman had all the power, and Superman could do everything. I, I've always thought I was Superman. That's my goal, to protect people. That's what I want to do. And so I'm not sure what, what 
form that will take or what format, but I tell you what, you find me when this is done, uh, I, I will absolutely be figuring out some way to uh, rescue damsels in distress. Chair, can you confirm your age now, please, and then touch on what, uh, looking back over your career since your uh, elected election in 2012, what are you most proud of uh, during your tenure here? Yeah, so c can I confirm my age? I'm, I'm uh, 47, <laughs> going on 71. I'm 71, and uh, this year I'll be 72. And what I'm most proud of, I, I, I can say, the first thing that comes to my mind, I'll just say it, I'm most proud of the men and women of the Martin County Sheriff's Office. We have worked so hard to attract and retain competent, qualified people. Yeah, we've had a few slip by, you, you all can Google it. We've had some that let us down. But by and large, the community here in Martin County trusts the men and women of the Martin County Sheriff's Office. They are honest, diligent, hardworking people, and I trust them with my life. I'm extremely proud of the fact that we uh, have moved on to a sophisticated technological platform. You know, when I came here, we kept records by scratches, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we now have sophisticated and robust technology. Uh, I, was, I was very focused on making sure that our promotional process was, was merit-based, you know, not friends, who was friends with me. Uh, I, I don't go to my people's houses, they don't come to my house. I, we operate everything here on a professional level and I'm extremely proud of that. And then finally, I'm proud of the command staff that I've been able to bring around me. First of all, who I mentioned was uh, Chief Budenseek, but my, my uh, majors, my captains, my lieutenants, my sergeants, my legal advisors sitting in the back, my administrative assistant, uh, to find people, find people. And, uh, and that's what I'm most proud of. And what is your hope for the Martin County Sheriff's Office once you finish your term? Yeah, my hope for the Sheriff's Office when I finish my term is very simply that they maintain the integrity, the commitment to excellence that they currently have. You know, all too much today, and I mentioned it before, politics is almost performance art, clickbait, vacuous words, meaningless pledges. We don't want that here. I want men and women that do what they say and say what they do, that they, they get up every single day with a heartbeat to keep your children your grandparents, your parents safe, your property safe. That's what we're about. And that's what I want. When I leave here, I want to hear two, three years from now, wow, Sheriff, nothing changed, got better. That's what I want. Sheriff, is it safe to say you have more fun doing this job than being in Tallahassee as a state lawmaker? Yeah, do I have more fun doing this than what my son is doing as a state rep? Absolutely. And this is a paying job, which I've always appreciated. Tallahassee is volunteer work. I love policy making though, I really did. I, there's a place for that. There's a place for good lawmakers. Uh, I can only enforce the laws that the people in Tallahassee pass. But this is, this is the ride of a lifetime. All I ever wanted to do when I was in fifth grade, Mrs. Berger, I'm proving I'm not leaving because I'm senile. Mrs. Berger was my fifth grade teacher and she said, write a paper on what you want to be. Cindy, you know what I wrote? I want to be a cop. <laughs> I wanted to be a Metro Dade cop, which is where I became and did for 20 years. And that's all I've ever wanted to do. I love Tallahassee. I love passing laws, making the trial bar crazy. Uh, they celebrated when I left, but, but my heart is here. My heart is on the streets. My heart is putting on a badge and a gun and soft body armor and going to work and keeping people safe. And, uh, and I'm going to miss that dreadfully. Any chance you might uh, entertain another elected position down the road, maybe something a little bit more local? Would I entertain something locally and uh, elected? I would. I, I think if the opportunity ever arose that I could run for a, a, a legislative position of some kind, whether congressional or, or uh, state again maybe, I, I think that's something that uh, my age would not be a barrier to. Uh, but yeah. No, I can commission, no how, no way. I love them. That's a hard job. Uh, I have a fun job, they don't. But uh, yeah, that's the short answer to that. Any cases that you like solve 
for you? you know, Any work, Greg? Any I'm cases that's out there that you like to solve or anyone that keeps you up at night? The ultimate unsolved case for me really was Andrea Parsons. Some of you don't remember. Uh, that was partially solved. You know, we, we, we know, we, we think we know beyond a reasonable doubt who did it. Someone did serve some time. I would love to get those remains back, though. I think I owe it to her parents, her mother. I would love to do that. Beside that, nothing sticks out to me. There's some cold cases, Greg, that were here before I got here that I think about. Uh, this one in Jensen Beach particularly. But by and large, our homicide people have been phenomenal. We don't have a lot of unsolved cases. Well, hearing no more questions, I'll close with this. I'll close where I started. I love y'all. Y'all have been good stuff. I'm never afraid of when the press calls. Never. And, uh, and I know John Budenseek will, will pick that mantle up and will be every bit as available as me. I think most of you here have done interviews with me in my front yard. If you need the story, we're going to answer your, your call. So, hey, all the best. God bless. And uh, Greg, stay strong, buddy. See you guys. Referencing our WPBF 25 photojournalist Greg Duncan there after 12 years of sheriff, 52 years in public service, William Snyder is not running for re-election. He called this job the ride of a lifetime. Much more today at 4 o'clock.